I am Amber and I'm an intuition and subconscious breakthrough mentor. I created this podcast for you to show you your infinite potential, help you break down the barriers to more love in your life and to make joy a choice by listening to your intuition. No matter if you're married or single, this show is for you because the world would be a much more loving and better place if we learn to all date ourselves. Together we let go of fears and resistance around your dream life so you can show up in your full authenticity. Disclaimer, listening to this podcast might result in a continuous glow up. Let's start the show. As someone who used to be super insecure, not like herself, be so conflicted about who she was, I've learned how it is to go through these stages of self-love. And they are not what you think, and I want to share them today on today's podcast episode through video as well. So if you want to watch this episode, you can hop over to YouTube. And in the YouTube version, I'm going to make this into a chapter so you can skip ahead if you want to. So there are five stages of self-love that we all kind of go through. And I started to recognize these as I'm now on this self-love journey for, I think, nine years now when I was 15. I really started to read all the personal development books, go to courses, do a therapy work, inner child work, mirror work, whatever, you name it, I've done it. And these are the things that I've come across and I think that they will really help you today as well. I am a subconscious breakthrough coach, so I look into other people's beliefs around themselves, where they come from. That is a huge part of this work. And I will tell you a little bit about how you can practice this yourself. It's really easy and I love it because it's so transformational. And I'm also an energy reader and channeler, so I work with my intuition so I can stay true to what I feel within myself and my body, what I need, who to trust, what to do. And this is also a process that has really helped me to be able to stay closer to who I am and notice what really lights me up, trains me. You get where I'm going with this, right? So these practices will also be infused in this episode, in these chapters. But first off, let's just dive a little bit deeper into what you can do if you're at your really low, low point. So I'm going to go back to me as a teenager I and a young adult as well. I've suffered from uh, anxiety attacks, PTSD, and I've also been a people pleaser for a long time. So the identity of self was not really a thing with me. I had trained myself to be someone for someone else. And this comes through this insecure feeling of needing to be liked, needing to be needed by other people. And so I was very useful in the lives of others. So you can imagine that starting to figure out who I was, I was really just starting with a blank page. I did not know. So when you go back to who you were when you were really little, you can find traces of that first like pure self. And so that's what I did. I started to journal. I started to get into the thoughts that I had about myself and they were not pretty that I can tell you. And so when you start to do this work and this is where I started, so this might not be where you started. You might start with taking more care of yourself, taking a little bit more time to listen to what you're actually feeling. You might start by surrounding yourself with better people. You might start to discover that you have some unhealthy patterns, maybe with people um, that you get into conflicts or that you attract people who are not really honest with you or whatever the case may be, right? There is this starting point where you're like, enough is enough. I'm now going to learn how to take care of myself, how to love myself more. So my podcast is obviously called Date Yourself. And this is because I've learned how to date myself through these years, starting from 15. So I started with journaling and this has helped me through some of the darkest periods of my life because I tend to get really, like really into my head. And when that happens, I just kind of panic. I don't know what is what anymore. I also am very sensitive to feelings of other people. I can easily pick up on how the other person is feeling. Also, I'm very sensitive to all the energies around me. Like I said, I'm an energy reader, a channeler. I get to receive a lot of intuitive information. And so writing helps me to know what is what. And so 
I started to get really conscious of the thoughts that I was thinking and I recognized that most of the thoughts that I was thinking had to do with how other people saw me. And this is the starting point. This was kind of a long introduction to the first point, but the first point is how other people see you, what other people want of you is reflected back to you. And through how other people see you, you start to see yourself. This is not always who you actually are. Most of the time, it's just their version that they have of you in their mind reflected back to you, but that ne- that's not necessarily who you really, really are. And this is the first point that I see happening within myself, where I started to believe what other people were feeding me. They were feeding me their projections of me. And you know, people can kind of give you this feeling of, I want you to be like this because people do this because they then feel more comfortable. So for example, drinking culture can be an example of that. Like um, if you had enough drinks, people would be like, well, why aren't you drinking more? Like here, here's another drink. Like there will be a drink pushed into your hands to be like, drink more alcohol because we all are doing that and you're just like why do you care what i'm drinking like you also don't care what what i'm eating so why is this such a big thing but that's just society like someone feels more comfortable if you wouldn't behave in their way because they're also doing it and so and that kind of keeps that structure alive right if you behave outside of the structure the structure will fall apart and that's also what we're kind of fearing because we like the comfort of those structures so that but that's besides the point so there will be people who want you to behave in a certain way because it makes them feel comfortable so then if you don't have a strong sense of self you will believe that what they are giving you as their version of you is the truth so that's where you start you start to see which stories that other people have fed you are true and you also start to recognize what parts of those stories you like and you don't like which parts of the story you agree with and you disagree with and i've also recognized that this also is the other way around so it could be that you see yourself in other people as well because we like in other people what we have or what we would love to be like and then we dislike in people what we don't want to have and the parts of ourselves that we don't really like within ourselves we're all reflections of each other so if someone is upsetting you by saying something maybe also look into yourself as to why that is triggering you is that something that you wish to have or is that something that you also have fears around or or insecurities about. It's always a reflection. That's why we can see ourselves in other people and other people can see themselves in us, but we're both projecting our different versions onto each other. And so it's not necessarily the truth, it's just a projection. There will be truth in it, but is it really the truth? So I hope you are following following me with this. Let me know your questions during... Uh, this episode if you want to get deeper into this so have you noticed this as well that people like want you to be a certain way or some people see you very different people see you very differently and you're just like i'm all these versions but which one am i right and that's what you're kind of trying to figure out right who am i to myself and that sense of self is born through being curious by learning about all these different versions and learning your own version of it And of course, what we can do is then form our identity by having that kind of constructive criticism from the mirroring, from the outside, all the projections, right? What do I want to keep? What do I want to shed? And what do I need to accept and love about myself? And so then you come into the second phase, which is kind of the retreating phase. The first phase is like the reflection in other people. And then the second phase is retreating. Because when we are discovering more about ourselves and other people have a strong opinion about who we should be or who we have been, and you are recognizing that you are trying to form your own identity. It's kind of like you get into the cocoon, the butterfly cocoon, right? You, you get back to yourself because all those noises are just kind of distracting you from 
forming your own identity. So this could be that you're going through a healing phase or you might go on a world trip or you just have a phase where you don't really feel like interacting with a lot of people. You just kind of want to learn and maybe do um, inner, the inner work or read a lot or write a lot. And this is what I see happening in my own life as well. This still keeps happening because we can still form new identities as we grow. And so what happens when you retreat is that you kind of go over all of these versions. You kind of let go of versions that you have been or versions that other people have kind of placed on you that that you are, but you actually don't really resonate with that anymore. And you allow yourself to be something different or to accept all the parts that have not been accepted about you yet. You might need to set new boundaries. You might need to kind of bend the rules so other people get that their projection might not be true. And you form a real stable sense of self through doing this. And so the inner work, kind of the retreating phase is rewriting your beliefs, rethinking what you thought you were, who you were, and how you want to present yourself, how you want to behave in this world. And so this is necessary for you to feel more confident within yourself. If you don't have that strong sense of self, you are basing your worth on the reflection of other people. Because that's all that you see. Because you don't know who you are within yourself. And this is normal as well. I still go through this sometimes where I'm just like, okay, I've changed so much. Who is it that I'm now? And so then I get into my retreat phase and then I'm kind of figuring it out feeling stronger within myself, like, oh, okay, this is not really fitting me anymore. Um, I want to go into a new direction. Maybe these people don't really fit my life anymore, and these do, and this is what I actually want to be doing, right? And this is a painful period. It's a lonely period. As you are retreating, you are not interacting so much anymore. Maybe you are, but there is a part of you who is kind of figuring their stuff out, right? To form this stronger sense of self. And... This is necessary because if you want to know who you are, you should be in conversation with yourself, with your soul to feel within everything like, okay, I got it. Or this is now what I want to stand for. These are my boundaries. If you don't know what your boundaries are, people are going to be crossing them, right? So it's kind of getting clear with yourself on the life that you want to create. And so what helps with this is also, for example, like this is my medium. I love writing. I love uh, maybe talking into a voice memo or talking to friends or coaches about this stuff so I can hear myself. Because if you're talking to someone, they reflect back to you what you've said. You can really get deeper into this, right? So coaching can really help. Writing it down is just like you can reread what you wrote. And so you can read what is actually going on in your mind. And also like speaking in a voice memo, that's if I'm really lazy and I don't want to write. So (laughs) you can re-listen to what you said, right? And so these things just make it really easy for you to understand who you are at this point in your life and what you need. And then you can go from there. You can set those boundaries. You can have that strong sense of self and that confidence. And that's the self-love because you know what it is that you need and you stand for that. And I think that that is the most loving thing that you can do for yourself, to trust yourself and to stand up for yourself and to rearrange your life. And it doesn't mean that you have to like rearrange everything in your life, but maybe some things are out of alignment. That You rearrange those things so you can fully trust yourself, fully come back to yourself. That's self-love to me. So I wanted to make this episode and this video because I recently discovered two other phases, three other phases of the self-love journey. I've also made another video on my YouTube channel before when I talk, where I talk about um, self-love, how you can accumulate more self-love. But I kind of didn't know about these next three phases. So these are really interesting and I'm excited to go into them deeper. And so the third phase of the self-love journey is the opening of the heart and the new reflection. The new reflection, because you have now kind of come into who you are and that is going to be reflected back to you in the conversations that you will have, the interactions, while you are setting these new boundaries and presenting yourself in a new way. 
So it's kind of the adjustment phase where other people are going to be re reflecting back to you how you have changed internally. I hope this makes sense. So if you have a, a strong belief about yourself, other people are tend to reflect that back to you. If you're really insecure about some parts of yourself, like your friends might say, for example, like a body part. If you talk about this with your friends, they might be like, oh, don't be silly, it's beautiful, don't worry about it, whatever. But still, you see images or you compare yourself to people who have this body part that you would actually really like. And so it's still like, doesn't matter if someone says that you're beautiful, you are still going to believe that you should be something different or you should look different. And so you are integrating this new belief of, of like, I actually accept myself with this. I don't need to compare because I was born this way anyway. I'm going to deeply and completely love myself even though I might not agree with this like standard that society has set, for example. And so as you start to shed the belief of, I don't like this, I should be looking different. If you let, while you let that go, you start to attract a new reality. So you don't get triggered anymore so much if you see someone who has what it is that you want, for example, because you already accept yourself. And so that is what will be reflected back to you. And this can also apply to many other things. For example, being good enough for a job, deserving uh, more money, deserving more love, love being easy for you. There are so many beliefs that keep us behave in a certain way and for life to reflect that back to us, those beliefs that we have. And so if we change them, we get a different outcome. We get a different result. We get a different reflection. That is what is happening in the third stage. So you get to adjust to believing these new things. And this also opens up our heart. We see life in a different way. It's kind of this awakening where like, oh, I thought differently about this in the past, but actually it can be like this. And that opens our heart. It opens us up to new opportunities. Mostly what you see when we have gone through this cocooning phase, this retreating phase, is that there are new people coming into our lives when we have set those boundaries because we are saying kind of like this is what i accept this is what i don't accept and then life readjusts to that as well it's reflected back to you so that's the third phase which is beautiful and that's why the retreating phase can be lonely and painful because you have to look at the stuff that isn't working anymore. And that's that sucks sometimes, it really sucks. It's kind of this awakening period, right? But then the readjustment gives us a reflection of why it's so worth it. And that's where the transformation happens and the new opportunities come in and the soulmates and whatever um, come in. And yeah, it's so worth it at the end for sure. So the fourth, uh, phase which I'm learning right now truly is softness so as a coach as a mentor I find it really important to do the work the inner child work the mirror work the writing whatever I just talked about in the beginning right I came I could become obsessive in getting better and this left me not feeling good enough I was trying to become more loving towards myself by doing these practices, right? It's all for self-love, it's for accepting yourself. But if you keep working on yourself all the time, it kind of sends this signal of I'm not good enough because I need to do more work. I'm not perfect enough, right? And that's kind of the whole point of doing this work is to feel good enough. So it doesn't make sense. Like the girl math ain't mathing. So this is why I love that I'm now learning softness. To know when it's good enough, to know when to stop, to know when to just appreciate how far I've come and that that is good enough. So a question that I've been asking myself lately is, when is it good enough for me? And I guess that I'm still kind of trying to answer that. It, the answer differs from time to time, but I think that when I am content, when I know that I've, I'm doing my best, that that is enough. And so while I am also kind of in a transition period where I'm still kind of cocooning, to be honest, there are still kind of things falling away 
and I'm still making different decisions than I used to be making. I'm still setting new boundaries. And so I still have a lot of things to work out, you could say. And I'm accepting that, but sometimes I'm not accepting that. I'm just like, I should be further ahead by now, right? And that's where the self-love of the softness can come in. Self-love is also having grace with yourself, having grace with the journey. And it might not feel productive to not be working on myself and to want to be further ahead by now. Like this really, this feeling of I, I need to do more. That is kind of what I'm learning to soften into, to be like, but when is it good enough? So if you are recognizing yourself within this, what has really helped me is first of all, that question, when is it good enough? But then the second thing is understanding the journey. So sometimes we can get hung up on, for example, that we should be a different person by now. We should have accomplished more or whatever. But the journey that you're walking is so super unique to you. And we all know that at a certain point in time, we can look back and we can say like, oh, that's why that happened, right? And sometimes we have no freaking clue why stuff happened. And that's so super frustrating. That's kind of why I feel hurried sometimes. But then standing still and thinking about that and not having an answer for it and that being okay, that's where the softening happens. That's also self-love because I cannot change what happened to me. I cannot change what I've done. I cannot change who change who I've become. I can only change and control what I'm going to do next. So the accepting of the journey, the whole journey with every facet and where I'm at right now, that's the softening and that's self-love too. And then the fifth phase is while you are learning this compassion with yourself to see the patterns, to see the beliefs, to see when you are comparing, to see when you are believing someone else's version of you, well, that might not be your truth. That is the fifth kind of integration phase where you can see someone else mirroring an aspect of you back to you. So you can see when someone is projecting something onto you. And with projecting something onto you, I mean like you can recognize when someone wants you to behave in a certain way. You can recognize when someone is trying to manipulate you because of their own fears and insecurities. And you can also have compassion for that because you know that those parts also live within you. And so having compassion for the other person also means having compassion for yourself because we're all kind of in the same, in the same boat and treating other people with the same kind of love and respect will come back to you. I'm not saying put up with bullshit. I'm not saying don't um, protect yourself and walk away if something is abusive or not, right? Right? I'm just saying, recognizing that we're all human and recognizing the humanness in other people and having compassion for that, that is also self-love. Because if you get defensive or you kind of get really triggered and try to prove yourself, that is not self-love. That is this competitive facet of you who is feeling that they need to prove themselves. But why are you? And then you get back to the acceptance of the journey of yourself to be like, I don't need to prove myself because I know who I am. I might get triggered by this person, but I wish them love and healing. This is not my game to play. Like I pick my battles. That is self-love as well. It's, it is the walking away. It is the sticking up for yourself. But it's also to know what is actually happening. And this can only, in my experience, this can only really happen when you have a really strong sense of self because then you can recognize the triggers within other people and the projections. You, can, you don't take it so personally anymore. And you don't need to because you know what is yours. You know what is that other person's. And still... That is something that keeps evolving. That is kind of this game that we play because this cycle repeats itself. There will be a time where this moment of, oh shit, I have been taking on other people's truth or I have believed that was a certain way, but now I feel different. What's actually happening here? And then you get back into phase one. 
where you are starting to realize like, okay, wait, this doesn't re resonate anymore. What are the things that are happening in my life that are reflecting something back to me that I don't identify with anymore? What is, what is happening? And then you go back into the work, the retreat phase, the readjustments, and then the softness and the compassion and the open heart, you know? That's all that I have for you when it comes to the five phases. And I would love to have a little bit more of a conversation about this with you because this is just something that I've picked up on recently in my own journey. And so I would love to know how you resonate with this and in which chapter of the phases that you are. I'm still kind of in the retreating and opening my heart reflection phase. So uh, phase number three and four. We're all going through these phases, right? So moral of the story is have compassion with wherever you are in this phase because we're all trying to figure it out and you are doing amazing if you are even like conscious of the fact that this is kind of the work that we do to get back to ourselves. I think that that is the basis, the starting point for self-love for sure. So if this is resonating with you, just know that you're, you're right on time, you're on the right path and you are conscious of how you are treating yourself what you're taking on. If you want to get deeper into this, like I said, I do this reprogramming of the beliefs work with my clients, with my people. Um, I have an amazing bundle called the Confidence and Worthiness Bundle. That is kind of the work that I've done over these nine years, discovering which thoughts and beliefs have held me back from being my true self, standing in my power. Uh, because first I just kind of gave my power away to other people what they wanted of me right so i formed this really strong sense of self through doing that inner work through rewriting my beliefs by listening to my intuition so if you want to learn this i teach this in my bundle there are some really cool guided videos meditations in their workshop so please check that out if this that resonates with you if that is something that you know that you need I would love to help you further there. Uh, let me know in the comments what you resonated with in this video or DM me on Insta if you're listening on Spotify or iTunes. Thank you so much for tuning in. Love you guys. And I hope to see you and speak to you in another episode. Have a great day. Bye.